stuff you were asked to memorize. And we need to make sure that we have done that. We are starting a very long unit on trigonometry. And if we don't know the basics, we are simply dead meat. So, let's take a look at this. These are the kinds of things you need to have memorized, and this is how you might be asked to prove you have it memorized. So look at that very first question. We have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and you were asked to memorize the ratios in the 30, 60, 90, which you did back in geometry. This is nothing new. Across from the 30 is a 1. Across from the 60 is the root 3, and across from the 90 or the hypotenuse is a 2. You got to know those ratios. Okay? So if you don't, get them figured out. You've got to know them. Number two, adjacent over hypotenuse. Which function is that? That is cosine. Remember our good friend, chief of the trigonometry tribe, Ch Chief Sokotoa? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. What is the reciprocal of the tangent? The big, there are six trigonometric functions. The big three are sine, cosine, and tangent, but they all have reciprocal functions. What is the reciprocal of the tangent? Cotangent. All of the reciprocal relationships have one co involved. So sine is the reciprocal of cosecant, cosine is reciprocal of secant, and tan is reciprocal of cotan. What is the length of the hypotenuse? in a 45-45-90 triangle? Well, again, you need to know the ratios. This is a 45-45-90, so these two sides match, and the hypotenuse is root two. Write a definition of cosecant. There were at least two definitions on your sheet, I think maybe three. What is a definition of cosecant? Well, it's reciprocal of sine, so one over sine. One over sine would be um, one definition. What's another one? Anybody know your uh, circular definitions? R over Y? Uh -huh. Yeah, these are biggies. These are biggies. We simply cannot be successful if we don't have these fundamentals memorized, okay? I know it's a lot, but we, everything, everything builds on this, so we just simply have to know them. All right, let's look down at the bottom one, the bottom quiz. Okay, again, we have our 30, 60, 90 triangle. What's across from the 30? One. Across from the 30 is one, 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 one. Somehow you have to remember that. I don't know how, you just have to. I got something quickly I gotta take care of. Quickly, see if you can fill in the rest of those. See how much you can do without looking. We're doing that practice quiz. See how much you can do without looking. Yeah, 
See how that's automatic for me? It has to be automatic for you. Opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent is tangent. If you see this triangle and you see a 1, a 1, and a root 2, you immediately know that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. What's the reciprocal of the sine? The reciprocal of the sine is the cosecant. What are two definitions of the cosine? One of them's right here. One definition of the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Another definition of the cosine is x over r. Okay? All right. Um, okay, so put that down for a second. We are going to now take a look at our book and get our calculators out. We need to get our calculators out because we need to be familiar with a couple of special buttons. Today we are going to talk about a couple of very, very important ideas. As grown-up mathematicians, you are going to be exposed to a different, a couple of different ways of measuring angles. Up to this point of your life, probably every angle you've measured has been in degrees. And that's perfectly okay. Degrees are kind of a made-up uh, unit, totally man-made. A degree is simply 1 360th of a revolution. So somebody a long time ago decided, hey, I'm going to take a circle and split it up into 360 parts, and each one of those little arcs is going to be called a degree. Totally man-made. Today we're going to talk about a more organic angle measurement. But first, I want to emphasize, maybe you know this already, maybe you don't, that degrees can be subdivided into smaller pieces called minutes and seconds. So if you think of a degree as like an hour on the clock, it can be broken up into 60 minutes. So 60 minutes equal one degree. And then each, each minute can be broken up into 60 seconds. So it's like if you have a foot, you know, a length of one foot, you can split that up into 12 inches. You can do the same thing with degrees. Degrees can be split up into 60 minutes. Each of those minutes can be then broken down into 60 seconds. So when I look in my book at problem number one, it says 23 degrees and 12 minutes. This is the symbol for minutes. So this says 23 degrees 
and 12 minutes. This means then 23 whole degrees and 12 sixtieths of another degree. Now your calculator will handle this for you. The directions say convert from DMS to decimal form. Well, one option you have is to say, okay, this is 23 plus 12 sixtieths. And you can type that into your calculator and get a decimal. Because again, a minute is a sixtieth of a degree. So I have 12 sixtieths. Or we can go to our calculator. Let's all do this together. We're going to put in 23. And then we're going to go to our angle menu. And our angle menu for me is above the APPS key. So I'll press second angle. Did you find it? It literally says angle above the button. Now, as soon as you press that, what's the very first symbol you see there? Degrees. So you just hit enter, and now your calculator shows 23 degrees. Now put in the 12, go back to your angle menu, and if you click down one, you see your minute mark? Hit enter, and now this is what's on your screen. If you hit enter, it comes up with the decimal form of the angle. So if we look at the next one, it says 3524. So we type in 35, go to our angle menu, choose degrees because we're typing in 35 degrees, 24 minutes. So once we get in 35 degrees, then we type 24, go back into our angle menu, choose the minute mark, and what did you get for that? What's the decimal form? 35.4. Now, if we needed seconds, like number three, for example, number three says 118.44.15. 118.44.15. This is the seconds mark. So this literally says 118 degrees, 44 minutes, 15 seconds. <coughs> All right, so here's how we put that in. You know how to do the 118 degrees. You know how to do that. You know how to do the 44 minutes. So now I have 118.44 on my screen. I need all of you to be at this point. Why are you staring at me, Redor? Hmm. Bad idea. Now, if you look at your, oh shoot, I had you, uh, I left it and I don't want you to go back to it. But in your angle menu, there isn't a seconds mark. You didn't see this in your list. Instead, you will see that, and don't ask me why, but you will see it down above your plus sign. Do you see what looks like little quotation marks? It's the second symbol. Do you see it above the plus sign? Now for me, it is in green, which means I don't use my second button, I have to use my alpha button. So I will type 15, and then alpha plus, and that little, this symbol comes up. So I see this on my screen now. This is exactly what I see on my screen. Press enter, and the decimal version is 118.7375. Now, luckily for you, the calculator goes the other way also. So if you look at question number five in your book, it says, I have an angle 21.2 degrees, and I need to get that in degrees, minutes, and seconds, DMS, degrees, minutes, and seconds. So I'll type 21.2, this is really cool, you're gonna love it, 21.2. Then I'm gonna go into my angle menu, and if you look down the list, what do you see? DMS. Click down to DMS, hit enter twice, and it says 21 degrees, 12 minutes, and zero seconds. All right, let's do one more of those. Let's do, um, let's do number eight. 
99.37 degrees translates into how many degrees, minutes, and seconds? 99.37 is 99 degrees, 22 minutes, and 12 seconds. Now, did anybody think why we have these subdivisions for degrees? Can you think of a, a reason why it would be important to sometimes break degrees down into, into uh, minutes and seconds? What? Because a big degree can be easy to simplify down. Okay, when you say a big degree, I mean a degree like a is a degree. Oh, okay, I see, I, I misunderstood. I was thinking where you were going to go, Stephen, was Trigonometry was originally one of the biggest reasons for it was navigation. So you got these little ships out sailing around the, the earth yeah. on the ocean. And the earth is a pretty big thing, isn't it? Yeah. So when we look at the earth, here's the earth, and here's a degree. This is one degree. Now that's an exaggerated version, but that's one degree. That encompasses a pretty big space of the Earth's surface. That arc would be pretty big because the Earth is giant, right? So if you were a ship out sailing and you needed to get to a particular island, let's say, wouldn't you like to narrow it down a little bit more than that big, huge arc? So instead of saying just to the nearest degree, we'll shrink that down and say, okay, our latitude or our longitude is you know, 28 degrees, 32 minutes, and 15 seconds. And that really narrows it down in terms of the arc of the ocean that we would be traveling over to get to our island. Does that make sense to you? All right, yeah, when you're going to your island. All right, okay, so that's enough about degrees. We will we will, because we are just beginning uh, this new unit of measurement, we'll be working a lot in degrees, and that's why I had you measure these in terms of 30, or memorize these in terms of 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90. But beginning today, we're gonna spend some time with an angle measurement known as the radian. Have any of you worked with radians before? Tom, do you know what a radian is? It is an angle measurement, just like a degree. It's just a different way of measuring angles. Do you know what it is? Something to do with 2 pi. Something to do with 2 pi, yes. That's all I remember. A radian is the measure of the angle determined by striking an arc of radius length. And why Tom associates a radian with 2 pi, and that's a great association, is because one revolution is 2 pi radians, just like one revolution is 360 degrees. So if we are building a relationship between radians and degrees, let's say we want to convert from one to the other, which will be a huge part of your assignment tonight. If you want to convert from one to the other, you're going to start with the fundamental relationship that two pi radians is 360 degrees, or if we simplify that, if 2 pi radians is 360 degrees, then does it make sense to you that 1 pi is 180 degrees? And that's what we'll remember. Just like, what, 1 inch is 2.64 centimeters or something like that? Just like 12 inches is 1 foot, pi radians is 180 degrees. That's your conversion factor. But let's come back to the definition for a minute. I told you this was organic, and what I meant by that was this isn't made up. This grows out of our study of circles. If we take a circle 
and the radius of the circle is, let's say, five. If you took a piece of string five units long, that's radius length, and wrapped it around this circle, the angle that that determines is one radian. So if we took a circle, and let's say the radius was three, and we took a piece of string that was six units long, how big would that angle be? Two radians. How do I know that's two radians? Because every radian is one radius of arc length, right? So if the radius is three, then every three would be one radian, right, as I wrapped around the circle. This is one of the biggest formulas, really, in mathematics, and that is that arc length equals radius times radians. In other words, six arc length equals the radius times the number of radians. <coughs> arc length equals radius times radians. So, now I expect you to be able to answer a question like this. You'll have them in your homework tonight. Here's a circle. And let's say the uh, arc length is 10, and the ra radian measure is 2.5, and you need to find the radius. What is the radius of the circle? Well, that's pretty easy. You can, some of you can just intuitively figure it out, but you can certainly use our little formula. Arc length equals radius times radians. So 10 equals the radius, which I don't know, times two and a half. So the radius equals 10 divided by two and a half, which as you said was four. Given one, or given two of these three things, arc length, radian measure of central angle, or radius, you will always be able to find the other one using that formula. Very, very easy. Now here's where the issues come in. Because you knew there would be an issue. Here's the issue. Find the measure of the arc determined by an angle of 40 degrees in a circle with a radius of 12. Let's say inches, that's pretty unit on that. Let's say centimeters, pretty unit on that. Now, arc length is a very, very easy thing to find. Arc length is an incredibly easy thing to find. But what's wrong? In order to find arc length, I need to have my central angle in radians. And how is my central angle given? In degrees. So if I'm going to use this formula, I'm going to need to convert from a degree measure to a radian measure. And that is so simple, it's unbelievable. It keys on, the, oh I erased it, but my relationship was pi radians equals 180 degrees. Put a star by that, you need to remember that. Put a star by this, you need to remember this. Now, to convert, there's different ways to do it. I like to set up a proportion. So anytime I need to change a degree measure to a radian measure, I'm going to say, I know that pi is 180. I know that this fraction right here is 1. Pi radians is 180 degrees. 
how many radians would be 40 degrees? I'm trying to change 40 into radians. Does this proportion make sense to you? I know that pi is 180. I want to know what is 40. So I'll just multiply by 40. So 40 pi over 180. That reduces to 2 pi over 9. So my central angle, which was given as 40 degrees, I have now changed into a radian. Now I can answer the question. Arc length is radius times radians. I want to know the arc length. What's my radius? 12. What's my radian measure? 2 pi over 9. So the answer is 24 pi over 9, which reduces to 8 pi over 3 centimeters. The arc length will be the same unit as the radius. So if the radius is in centimeters, the arc length will be in centimeters. So it's okay to just leave it as that instead? Oh, absolutely. That's how we want to leave it. If we were, and we'll do this at some point, maybe today, um, if we were going to uh, take RPMs and change them into miles per hour, then we would probably need a decimal for that. We may do that in a minute. Let's try a couple more of these conversions. So. Okay, Katie Klein, I know that look. Five. We've had five days to sleep. This is not the time to be doing it. Okay. All right. Good game, by the way, the other night. That was exciting. Okay. Now, let's try another one. Let's find the radius of a circle in which an angle of 32 degrees, let's say 132 degrees, creates an arc that is 15 pi over 17 inches long. Now I'm purposefully trying to mess up the numbers as much as possible so that you get that this is so simple, that arithmetic is the only thing that's going to hold you back here. You can do this. This is easy. What's the general formula we're going to use? This talks about an arc, and whenever we see that word in a problem, what are we going to think? Arc length equals radius times radians. Now, I know my arc length, right? So that's 15 pi over 17. I am looking for the radius, so I'll put R there. Now what am I going to put in here? Uh, uh, I got to change this, right? I got to get rid of 132 degrees and change it into a radian measure. So how do I do that? really simply, right here is our model. Pi is 180, so what is 132? That's the question. So 132 pi over 180, I'm sure that reduces to something. Um, 133. What is it? 1115. By the way, a little aside here, for those of you that don't know how to do that on your calculator, if you do 132 divided by 180, and then hit math, the very first option is frac, just hit enter a couple times, and it will change that math frac, changes, in, changes a decimal into a fraction. So now I'll put 11 pi over 15 right here. Now, how are you going to solve that equation? What do you need to do to get R by itself? Don't you need to divide by this or multiply by the reciprocal? 
So I have 15 pi over 17 equals r times 11 pi over 15. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which would be 15 over 11 pi. So r equals uh, 15 times 15, um, 225. The pi's are going to cancel. 17 times 11? 187. 187. And the unit on that would be inches? Where did the pi go? It canceled with this one. They both have pi. One on the top and one on the bottom. Got it? Alright, I'm going to have you do a couple of quick things for me and then uh, we're going to do a kind of a challenge problem, okay? And then maybe practice a little bit more with our memorization, but uh, here's what I want you to do. I want you to determine uh, how many degrees is 2 pi over 3 radians? And let's repeat that for 2 pi over 5 radians. Yeah. Or let's say 4 pi over 5. Say no. Okay, would you see if you can change those for me? Yeah, I maybe should do one more. a short and long way to do this problem. Did you think about saying, listen, I know pi is 180. So 2 pi over 3 would be what? Did anybody think about doing that? That's a very legit uh, official, that's the official way to do it. So when you cross multiply, you get pi x equals 120 pi, because 180 times 2 is 360, divided by 3 is 120. We can divide both sides by pi, and x equals 120 degrees. Now the shortcut version, though, is when you have numbers like this, remember what Tom said? 2 pi is a revolution. So see that numerator? How many degrees is just the numerator? 360. What's 360 divided by 3? So that's the official way to do it, but if you understand that pi is 180, pi over 3 then would be 60, times 2 is 120, you can do it that way without showing any work. Let's try that here. What's pi? 180 divided by 5. 180 divided by 5 is... 36 times 4, 144. So this one is 144 degrees. Now, it won't work with this. Do you understand why? There's no pi. So with this one, you have to set up your ratio or your proportion and say, okay, pi radians is 180 degrees, so 3 radians is how many degrees? Pi radians is 180. 3 radians is how much? So pi x equals 540, and x equals 540 divided by pi degrees.
pi radians is 180 degrees. So if there's a pi in your angle measure, use that fact. That's 180 divided by 3 is 60 times 2 is 120. If you don't have a pi, then you're going to need to set up your proportion. You can always set up your proportion, but you don't always have to if you have a pi in your radian measure. Okay? All right, one more problem and we're done for the day. Here it is though, it's a biggie. Let's look at it, talk about it, think about it. Find the speed in miles per hour of a tire with a 10 inch radius rotating at 150 RPMs. Does everybody know what RPMs mean? Revolutions per minute. So we have a tire that is making 150 revolutions in one minute. That's what we're starting with. We eventually want to end up with miles per hour. You've done this kind of problem before. Maybe not using this, these exact units. But what do you guys call it? I can never say the word right. Stoke? Sto whatever it is, yeah. Uh, factor label, that's what we're doing. Any ideas how we do that? How we get going here? We can certainly, we're gonna eventually have to get minutes for so we could say 60 minutes in one hour. Sure, because don't we need that? That's good, okay, so these are gone now. <coughs> Here's my tire. It has a 10 inch radius. Think about putting a blob of white paint on that tire and rolling it down a black asphalt driveway. Wouldn't you see, here's the driveway, wouldn't you see like blobs every so often? How often would those blobs happen? Every time the wheel made a revolution? Do you understand what I'm saying? Take a tire, put a blob of white paint on it, roll it down the driveway. It's gonna leave blob, blob, blob on the driveway, right? How far apart will those blobs be? A revolution. Right? Isn't this a revolution? And what's the distance of a revolution? When we're talking about a tire rolling down the driveway, what's the distance of a revolution? It's circumference. It's circumference. So one revolution is worth how much distance? A circumference. How long is a circumference? Two pi r. 2 pi r, which for us would be 20 pi inches. So we have, or not equals, we have 20 pi inches in one revolution. Guys, we got revolutions, we gotta get to a distance. So somehow you have to convert a revolution to a distance. So you think about a revolution as what it is, a circumference. Now, revolutions are gone. Now you've got inches per hour. What do you need to do? You gotta get to miles. So what are you gonna do? You gotta go to feet. So one foot is 12 inches. And we got to get to we got to get from feet to miles, don't we? So what do we know? What's that conversion? Five thousand. Three hundred. Two hundred and eighty-five. Two hundred and eighty. So we have five thousand or one mile. One mile 
is 5,280 feet. So the inches canceled, the feet canceled. What units are left? Miles on top and hours on the bottom. Is that what I wanted? Yes. So this is a time reader when I would type in the actual pi and answer in terms of a, like a decimal number, like 82.3 miles per hour, you know, whatever it works out to be. Everybody okay with that? What's the trickiest part, Alex and Alex? Well, the whole thing is, yeah, so what's the, what's the trickiest part of that, though? I think the trick, yeah, I, yeah, you got to be careful when you put it in, make sure you're dividing by both of those numbers, but you've got to be able to get from revolutions to a distance, so you need to remember that when a wheel is turning, a revolution is equal to a circumference. And once you make that change, I think you're, you're home free. Okay? Anna Heckman, it's a definition of a cotangent. Give me a definition of a cotangent. There's at least three of them I can think of. Uh, 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 Other way around. Cotangent would be adjacent over opposite. Remember Chief Sokotoa, feel free to write this at the top of your paper. If tangent is opposite over adjacent, then cotangent will be adjacent over opposite. What are the other definitions of the cotangent then? Reciprocal of tangent, and the circular definition is x over y. Right? Habecker. What's the side across from a 60 degree angle and a 30, 60, 90 triangle? Perfect, right on target. Michael, what's a secant by definition? Any definition of a secant? Um, uh, over Hypotenuse over adjacent. Um, Secant is the reciprocal of the cosine. So if you can remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, then secant will be hypotenuse over adjacent. The circular definition of the secant is, hey, sit down, we got three more minutes. I'm trying to help you get ready for a quiz that is definitely in your future. Your soon future. Like tomorrow or I'll just let you figure that out, Harry. Um, the other definitions, the other definitions of the secant are one over the cosine and r over x. Um, how long is the side opposite the 45 degree angle and the 45, 45, 90 Malvartis? Very good. How long is the hypotenuse in the 45, 45, 90 Julia Hickus? Square root two, very, very good. Um, Andrew, give me a definition of a sine. Any definition of a sine? Sine opposite over hypotenuse. Another definition of a sine, one that you're going to use a lot, is called the circular definition. That would be y over r. Um, Jadel, give me a definition of the tangent. Opposite over adjacent, very good. Also y over x. Um, which function, Maria, which function is hypotenuse over opposite? Cosecant. Cosecant, somebody said it, good. Cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. What's another definition of cosecant, Harry Payton? Besides hypotenuse R over opposite. Y. Yes! Very good. Did you look at your paper? No, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> All right, well, that's, yes, maybe that's it. All right, well, tomorrow I will be ready for a quiz over that. There are assignments online.